because we're going to celebrate Jesus. We have some guests in the house that are not from the Bahamas. And of course, uh, you know, the Bahamas, we are in a season of all seasons. We are celebrating uh, our 50th anniversary of independence. So we're on the road there. And if you watch how this guy before you is dressed, I'm all behaving tonight. Okay, all behaving. And so we are going to celebrate uh, what God has done for us in the way we know how to. And so we are going to give God. Anybody ready to give God praise in this house tonight? Ready to give God praise. You ready to sing tonight? Amen. You ready to dance to the Lord tonight? Oh yeah, we have come to celebrate the goodness of the Lord. Anybody would agree with me that God is good? Let me see how many of you have been to church on a Sunday morning. We will repeat the scripture. It is found in the book of Psalm. I do believe it's Psalm 100. It says, Make a joyful unto the all ye serve the Lord with. Come before his presence with. Know ye that the Lord, it is he that has made us. We are his people. Enter into his gates and enter his courts. Next part say. Be thankful to him and do what? Why? For the Lord is good. Amen. Isn't the Lord good? Amen. The Lord is good. He's a good God. And so we've come to celebrate the goodness of the Lord. And tonight is a multicultural night. Because we're coming from everywhere. There are different dialects, different forms of speech that's in this room tonight. And we want to appreciate that dynamic alone, that God is able to bring people from different backgrounds. You know, some of us are tall, some of us are short, some of us are beautiful, some of us are handsome. Some of us are black, some of us are not so black. Some of us are white, and some of us purchase our color. <laughs> Did I just say that? Every singer, every song, every musician 
that all would be done for your glory and for your honor, for the lifting up of your name, O oh God. Let miracles happen in the midst of worship, O oh God. Let prophecy happen in the midst of worship, O oh God. Let conviction happen in the midst of worship, O oh God. Let prayer happen in the midst of worship, O oh Lord. Lord, we stand at your feet. We lay back against you and breathe, O oh God. It's overwhelming, God. Your presence is heaven, O oh Lord. So, Father, bless us that we would not leave here the same, but we would leave here transformed by your glory. In the name that is above every other name. In the name whereby men must be saved. The name above thrones and majesty and dominion and powers of God. The name of the resurrected Son of God. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray and we believe to receive. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much, Pastor. Amen. At this time, we're going to have just a short 10 minute presentation on why are we here. And this is done by Bishop Joshua Lynn from Virginia. He's the state officer um, for Virginia. And we're going to welcome him at this time. After that, it will be a conference worship day. You can get a place while he's speaking. And let's get this thing moving. And so we've come. I just want you to keep celebration in mind. And we've come to celebrate the King of Kings. Come, Bishop. God bless you. Greetings from the Commonwealth of Virginia. It is certainly good to be here with you. Amen. We uh, send our greetings, my wife and all but three of my uh, children, uh, let me rephrase that, all uh, have one of my four children with me is what I'm trying to say. Uh, we are glad to be with you. The rest of my family looks forward to meeting you. I want to honor Bishop uh, uh, Pastor Barry Morris for putting this together. Uh, aren't you thankful for all of the work that he has done? Special thanks also, I know our national bishop is not with us, Bishop Ferguson, but honor he and his wife and the ministry they conduct here in the state. To all of those who have ministered this weekend, we bless you and thankful for your ministry. I want to ask us, why are we here? What is our singular purpose? We all can quickly say that we are here to worship, amen? We know that our highest purpose as God's created being is to worship, to praise, and to glorify our King. Amen. We come to join in the heavenly host as they would sing, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. We are practicing for that one day which we will join in to that heavenly host and worship and praise for eternity. Amen. Amen. We are fulfilling God's purpose that He has placed in us as His creation to give Him worship, to Worship His goodness, to praise His glory, to honor His majesty, and to shout His praises. We lift the name of the Lord above every name and everything that would exalt itself above Him, above every problem, above every other joy, above our family, above our friends. We are here to lift the name of the Lord. Amen? But I just wonder if there is a deeper purpose. As we have come to this conference, many of you have spent time and money and effort to be here to learn, to grow in the gifts and skills that God has given you, to enhance those and to renew your calling for worship and the arts that He has placed in you. You have come to tune your passion and to hold your talents before Him. You're here to be inspired, to be exposed or expanded in different forms of worship and music and arts, to be challenged to see where God is taking you deeper to new places, to see His glory in a greater way. Amen? You're here to give the best you can in the calling and in the gifts that He has given you, to become more enabled to fulfill your calling, to aim higher, to reach further, and to serve God greater through the gifts and talents He has placed in you, to reach another level. Is that why you have made the effort to be here? Amen? But I propose one other reason that we are here tonight. Forever I believe it is even a greater purpose in what we just said. 
See, you may become the best in all of history in your area of talent and gift. You may become the most renowned, whatever talent you may have. You may be written about as the greatest, with the greatest legacy in that area. But what is it for? Much like an orchestra, as it warms up with very talented individuals upon many different instruments. If you've ever heard those beautiful instruments and talented players begin to play, it sounds like a mess because they are out of sync in that moment. Each one of them amazing talents and gifts, but yet something is awry. It would be much like tonight as our conference team comes in just a moment that we assign each one of them a different song to sing and a different song to play. Each of them could do it with the most amazing talent we could ever see. The most passionate display of that song we have ever heard. But it would all sound awful. It would all sound out of sync and frankly, we would be here only out of obligation. Because it would not be worshipful. It would not be uplifting to the Lord. And none of our spirits would be renewed and touched. I believe the key of all of our talents and all of our gifts, one of the places that it can be found is Ephesians 4 and 3, that in part says that we should endeavor to be in unity of the Spirit. See, the key to all of our talents and all of our gifts and even our reason to be here tonight that the Lord placed in my heart is in this conference that we would not simply improve talents and gifts. Or that we would go back to our prospective churches and ministries and become the focal point of all the things that we do. But rather that we can be brought into the unity of His Spirit. Amen. The passage goes on and says that there is one body and one Spirit. Just as you were called into one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, and one baptism. One God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in all. We are one body. Amen. We represent one church. Amen. No matter where we're from, no matter our backgrounds, no matter that dialect, no matter that accent, no matter the skin color, no matter the flavor of our songs or our talents, we are one body. Amen. Give him praise. Let me conclude my time with this verse. We love to quote Acts chapter 2, verse 2. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the house, the whole house, where they were sitting. Amen. We love that. We are moved by that because we desire a lot move of God. We want to experience the power of His Spirit. Amen. But can I tell you, as our uh, pastor said this morning, I believe it was, the understanding of context is very important. We're all smart enough to know that there is a one before a two. The first verse of that chapter begins, though, and says, When the day of Pentecost had fully come, I challenge you to go back and think of the times you quote Acts 1 and 2. That's about where we stop quoting it. But there is a distinctive comma in that passage. And it continues verse 1 and says that they were all there with one accord and in one place. Before the move of God ever happened, they were in one place and one accord. Amen. See, it wasn't until they came into one accord, it wasn't until their hearts, their minds, their differences became in one accord in the united heart of one spirit. It wasn't about individual talents. It wasn't about individual gifts. It wasn't about individual passions. It wasn't about their great uniqueness. It was about them coming together in one spirit as one body made up certainly of many members. But in that moment, that's when it says then suddenly happened. Are you ready for a suddenly moment? Amen. We come from different backgrounds and different cultures and different all kinds of different things that we may come from. Even our musicians and singers sing different parts and play different instruments. 
but we are still one body. If we spend all of our time focusing on our differences, we will be divided, antagonizing one another, judging and gossiping and grading and fussing amongst ourselves. But I propose that we are not here to focus on our differences. It's not about us. It's not about a singular focus of one gifted individual. It's all about God. We are to be united in heart, to become one spirit, having a unity of spirit, becoming of one accord for one purpose, for one mission, for the singular glory of God. Amen. And then, suddenly can happen. Oh, aren't you ready to see suddenly? See, suddenly shocks the world. Sh suddenly breaks out of buildings, empowers churches, breaks the bonds of captives, heals the sick, gives sight to the blind, delivers the oppressed and finds the lost. We need some suddenly. Amen. Come on. Oh, hallelujah. As I close, we can't manifest this suddenly. We are not God. What we can do is come together tonight in one spirit, in one heart, united in one spirit, His spirit. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. I just wonder if anybody is ready for a suddenly. Oh, hallelujah. How about standing to your feet and begin to worship one spirit, a living God that is above every other name. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, break out in this place as we are one people and one body for the glory of the kingdom, for the perpetuation of the gospel to every four corner of this world that your name may be glorified above every name. Oh, hallelujah. Break out, Holy Spirit, in a united body of believers. In your name, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on and bless. Can we stand all over this building as we declare His greatness? Come on, all over this building. I need you to turn to your neighbor and just begin to tell him about the greatness of God, how great he's been in your life. Just briefly, just tell him how great he's been. Come on, you know how great he's been. You know how good he's been. You know how wonderful he's been in your life. You know what he's done for you. You have a testimony. You're standing here today, that's one testimony. So come on, just tell him of the greatness of God. Hallelujah, the Bible declares, great is the Lord and the city of our God and in the mountain of his holiness. So if you know that he's a great God, come on, can you just tell him, like, God, I thank you. Lord, I bless you. Lord, I glorify you. Lord, I give you all honor, all praise, everything that is due unto you. I give it to you right now. That's right now, we just give you all praise. Jesus, we lift up your name. 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 Jesus, we live the 
Hallelujah. That's what we've come to do tonight. We've come to lift him up. Hallelujah. <laughs> Still he speaks. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Bless the name of Jesus. Amen. This is the reason why we live. This is the reason why we move. For the past few days, we've been celebrating the Lord here in this room. And just what we experienced just now is what we've been experiencing since yesterday. The days are moving too fast. And some of us were here since Wednesday, basking in the love of Jesus. And today, we really enjoyed a powerful teaching from Sister Val Tuttle who is all the way from Kentucky. Amen. Hey, yeah. Let me tell you why Kentucky is important. Kentucky is the home of KFC. In the Bahamas, we call chicken the gospel bird. But I want to tell you something. NASA New Providence, you got KFC. In Abaco, I got a wing and a fry, just a wing, one wing, and a fry, that was about $9. They do something a little different there. I've got Abaco in here. Uh, they don't give you, you can't go get number one, number two, number three, like how it is. No, 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 they sell you chicken, one, you pay for that. If you want another piece of chicken, you pay for that. That's just the way it works. But when the colonel was anointing chicken to be fried, 11 herbs and spices, he came to Grand Bahama. Because we got the best Kentucky in the entire world. I'm telling you. Anybody eat Kentucky chicken and anybody do it? Even though the doctor said don't do it, you still eat it? Yes. Uh, but it's, it's, it's some special food. And so it's just a vibe. She put together a worship team. She is just simply the best. I want Kentucky to, to begin uh, the worship team, uh, that melting pot. I want you to uh, get in place. I want you to uh, come on stage right now. We want to give Kentucky a good old Bahamas welcome to our lovely shows. Come on. Come on, let's share them. After Kentucky has finished Kentuckying us, we are going to invite the Bahamas Public Services Choir. And then uh, I'm going to tell you the truth about this evening. So we want you. Come on, let's give Kentucky Rambles. They're coming. They were here since Wednesday. They didn't want to miss this conference. They didn't want anything to bypass them. I saw them on the beach. I saw them diving count. I saw them doing all kinds of things. Uh, they came and they immersed themselves into what we do. Some of you behaviors a little bit. You know, some of you have never been snorkeling before. Some of y'all guys here. But they came and they just enjoyed themselves. So let's give them one more. Bahamas, God bless you, we love you, thank you for being here, welcome, God bless you. Public Service Office Choir, you know what I mean, you all, next. Have been deceived and multiplied, God. 
Let's give them another round of applause. That's Kentucky. I just want to let you know that I'm not the MC for this evening. Pastor um, Shami and Grant allowed me to lead the way for just a moment. And uh, she's going to sail this ship right from here on in. And uh, thank you for being so gracious and kind to me. I really, really appreciate all the. What do you give me a round of applause, everybody? That's what's going on. That's how it goes for me. Put me the one for Jesus. Let's go. And so, um, Sister Shami Grant is no stranger to any of us, and so she's going to be taking over right after the public officer's choir would have sung. Uh, she would come on and take this train just a little higher. Let's keep enjoying the presence of the Lord.
came in this afternoon. They're all the way from the Exuma Island. And I want you to get yourself ready. All over the building, it's about to get exciting. The wonderful worship team from Exuma is about to hit the stage. They are about to minister for us. And I'm coming back because they, after they would have been done, then we're gonna run, we're gonna welcome an awesome group of singers. They've been building their vocals, they've been building the team for several months, and they're getting ready. I call them the Rope to 50 worship team. So once this wonderful group of singers would be done from the Exuma, beautiful island and keys, the next group of voices you will be listening to would be that the Road to 50 worship team led by Brother Patron. Amen? Come on, let's give them a round of applause. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. It's a blessing to be in the house tonight. And we come here to encourage you. Yes. And no matter what you may be going through, just trust in the Lord. Yes. Come on, turn to your neighbor, say, trust in the Lord. The Lord is saying tonight, trust me, trust me. Come on, say, trust me. Hallelujah.
Continually provide for me. Just isn't it? 
Hallelujah. Let's just take a moment. He's a song. The band is about to change, but he's a sovereign God. Do I have any sovereign God or souls that don't need any music right now? But in this moment, you just want to lift your hands and worship the Lord. Can we just have a moment right here? Glory to God. You are the sun, friend.
every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord to the glory of God the Father. When I walked in tonight, the worshipers were singing, lift him up. Somebody just one more time, lift up your voice and bless him. I will lift up your name.
It's never failed. That's not to say that you haven't been disappointed by some things that have happened. Am I in the wrong? Yeah. It's not to say that things have always gone your way because I'm sure they haven't. Things haven't always gone my way. And there have been times indeed that I've been disappointed. But God has never failed. He's never failed. And there's a song that I have planned to do. It says, you'll never let me down. Oh, no, 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 never let me down. Y'all know that song? Yes. You'll never let me down. Oh, no, 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 never let me down. And it talks about the faithfulness of God. It talks about how our hope is in God. It talks about how no matter what I've been through, no matter what I've seen, I can trust him. I can place my trust in him. Has anybody ever put your trust in the Lord? I want to encourage you tonight to trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding, but acknowledge him in all of your ways. And he has promised to direct our paths. So whatever path you're on tonight, I pray that the Lord is ordering your steps. And I pray that you'll find, if you don't know it as a truth tonight, I pray that you'll find out that God has never failed. Despite my disappointments, despite my letdowns, he won't let me down. Friends may let me down. Family might let me down government might let me down, but Jesus never will let me down.
She wrote this song uh, several years ago, probably about, I don't know, at least five years ago. And I ended up hearing the song and loved it, and I recorded it. Her name is Latasha Tudman. And um, Bishop and Latasha Tudman, they had a son that passed away after she wrote this song. So she wrote a song that said, my hope is in you. I'll trust in your unfailing love. My strength is renewed because you reign forever and ever. And she said, you'll never let me down. Oh no, 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 no. You'll never let me down. And then her son passes away several years later. Can you imagine the type of strength that God has to give you to still resolve to sing a song about him never letting you down. Have any of you ever been through anything? I can't hear you. If you could just indulge me one, one more moment and just lift that up with me and just sing to the Lord. You will never let me down. Oh no, 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 never let me You are 
Let us become
invite him in. Come on. Invite him in. Come on, invite him in. Come on, invite him in. We're moving, but invite him in. This means that you open up your mouth and begin to invite the Lord in your space. Not your neighbor, but you. Come on, 30 seconds. Can you invite him in this room? In your space. There is a glory that is resting in this room right now. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Don't wait on the next item. But can you embrace the presence of the Lord?
give God praise. Hallelujah. And we thank him tonight. Can you just put your hands together and give God a hand clap of praise? This is the whole, this is God we're doing it to, not your neighbor, not your friend. I'm not trying to round you up, but I want you to give him a praise offering tonight because he doing his word. I don't know about you tonight, but there is such a sweet spirit in this place. We're getting ready for the tabernacle comes of quiet and sin. And as they're coming tonight, I want them to make their way. I want them to make their way tonight. But as they're coming, I don't want you to take a break. This is not a break. Hallelujah. So if there is someone that still wants to worship the Lord, you are free to lift your hands. You are free to open your mouth. You're free to worship him Hallelujah. in any way that is possible for you. We thank God for all that has gone on before this moment. Yes, yes. Come on, give God praise for every singer, every worshiper. Give God praise for our band tonight. Come on, awesome, awesome, awesome gifts. Come on, y'all can do better than that. Let's give God praise for all these wonderful young men that have found themselves doing something for the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, we're getting ready now. To hit the afterglow, there's going to be some singing up in here. Oh, yeah. We're going to take it even a little bit further. And I, I call this, this portion of it um, unusual. They're coming now to sing for us. Uh, we have a number of persons that are right behind the wonderful cooling waters. Pastor Simeon out. Come on, y'all. God is about to just continue to ride with us tonight as you push in this place of worship. As a matter of fact, some of you have been sitting for a minute. Can you just jump up for one minute and come on, just stretch your hands. Come on, get, get up off of your feet and come on, get up off of your seat. Lift up your hands and stretch for a moment. Come on, stretch those legs out. Come on, stretch your legs out, come on. Some of y'all wouldn't move for nothing. <laughs> all right, it's an old song. They say, if you're happy and you know it, do what? Yeah. If you're happy and you know it, then your life will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, you do what? Yeah. Say what? Yeah. I can't hear you. Welcome now to Tabernacle Concert Choir.
Blessings and favor 
Can we bless the Lord? Come on, can we bless the Lord? Hallelujah! I didn't come all the way from the UK for you not to bless the Lord with me. So can we bless the name of the Lord? We're so grateful for all that he has done. This is the conference choir. Don't they look amazing? Yes! Bless the Lord. Now, we've had a short time to hear but one of the songs we're going to uh, minister to you tonight is wonderful, is your name. We want to give the choir a hand as we start. Can we give them a hand?
We're going to do this next song. And this is for all of us. We've been through stuff. How many of you have been through situations, difficult and dark situations? And sometimes you've not been able to see your way out. And for some of you, you may still be in process. But the songwriter says that God will work it out. It doesn't matter what it is. God will work it out. And a part of the song says, be still. And know. That he is God. And then he says, lean in. Take hold of God alone. And I don't know who this is for. But I want you to believe that God is on your side. He's never lost a battle. He's not surprised. He's not confused. He's not caught up by any situation that you may be going through or may have been through. He always wins. He always comes through. He always gives joy in the midst of sorrow. He brings joy in the midst of your mourning. So I want to encourage someone. This is a song of faith. If you can't see a light, I want you to believe the light of God on your situation. God will work it out.
So here are we tonight. is impossible with God. And so I dare say that you're in a room filled with possibilities. Whatever you need, whatever you desire, according to the will of the Lord, it's yours tonight. Take 30 seconds and tell him thank you. But as we prepare for this wonderful group to come tonight, can we just lift our hands all over the sanctuary? Thank you so much for being such a gracious people and allowing me in your space so that we can do what God has called us to do. It's going to get a little bit more exciting. But right here, right now, shh. Yeah. Just clap with us tonight because we're shifting something in the realm. 
Any worshipers in the house? Anybody ready to praise him? Are you ready to go
Jesus! If you gotta be tonight, I'll point you to Jesus! 